Welcome in the name of Christ to St. John's Lutheran Church and our worship in place. We're so glad that you're with us. I'm Pastor John Haug, and on behalf of myself and my colleagues, Pastor Frank and Pastor Amy, um, a special welcome to all of you joining us this day. If you're new to St. John's, we'd love you to go to our website, click on the link, New to St. John's, and fill out some information so we could be in touch with you. Thanks for being with us. A um, Couple things happening here at St. John's of note. Um, it's our second of three weeks of Stewardship Sundays, and so next Sunday will be our Commitment Sunday. Um, today at 1015, we continue with Bible studies. Pastor Frank is leading one, so join us for that. And this evening at five o'clock for our Sunday evening prayer, there will be a blessing of the animals. So come and participate on those on Zoom if that would be a great benefit and blessing in your life. Thanks for joining us for worship this day. Let us confess our sin in the community of God and each other. O oh God, hear the cry of your people. There are days when the storms threaten to break over us and the waves seem relentless. Our hearts falter and our spirits are weak. Disasters of our own making make us weary and we confess that we cannot do this alone. God, hear the lament of your people. Where the poor cry for mercy, we turn a blind eye. When the lonely reach out a hand, we so often withdraw our own. Where justice begs to be spoken, we stay quiet in our own comfort. And though you promise to be with us on rough water, we forget and cling to other shores. God, hear the cry of your people. Forgive us our sin, strengthen our hearts, open our eyes, that we may boldly step into the call of your Holy Spirit to shine in the dark, speak out for the ostracized, and stand firm when the gusty winds of this world prevail. People of God, take heart and have no fear the anchor holds when the storms are cruel. Your way is never all alone. Hear these words. The sin that weighs you down is no more. You are forgiven in the name of Jesus, the very one who stands with you in this life and in all that is to come. Rejoice greatly and rest in Christ never ending love for you and all creation.
It is well. It is well. With my soul. With my soul. It is well. It is well. With my soul. And together we say, Amen. The grace of Jesus Christ, our Savior, the reconciling love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all people and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure, and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Synecdoche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, 
whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I've prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hello, friends. Would you like to go to my party? I'm sorry, Mr. King, but I'm not interested. Okay. <laughs> Hi, family. Would you guys like to come to my party? 
I'm too busy. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I'm sad now. No one wants to go to my party. <sighs> I have an idea. Would you guys like to go to my party? You're all invited. In today's lesson, Jesus tells a story about how the kingdom of God is like a party. The king in the story decides to throw a huge party for his son's wedding. When you throw a big party, is it just you or do you have friends come over? Of course you have your family and friends come over. The king didn't want just a dinner for his son. He wanted a special celebration. The king prepares a great meal and invites his friends, his family, and everyone who is special to him and his son for the celebration. But they all make an excuse for not coming. Then the king realized that the only people who didn't want to come were the people he knew. So why not invite the people he didn't know? The king changed his guest list and decided to invite anyone and everyone to his party. This story teaches us about God's invitation for us to come to his party. Everyone is invited to God's party and it's up to us to accept the invitation. But we have to remember that even though parties are fun, there are some things that we'd have to do to get ready for them. We learn how to be at God's party by reading and talking about scripture stories or coming to church. And the good news that we learn is that God is having this great party and everyone is invited. Grace and peace to you from God, our loving parent. Amen. I don't know what you're praying for of late, but in your personal prayer life, if it's anything like mine, there's no short list. There's no shortage of confusing circumstances or potential troubles to be considering. And I hope there's blessings and joy too. If not obvious at first then apparent, then at least hidden moments of delight for you. From the White House to your house, from hospital rooms to your family rooms, from the city streets to the rural countrysides, everywhere you look is an opportunity for prayer. And if we're honest, sometimes we don't even have the words. So don't forget, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us when all you have are sighs. One thing's for sure, I'm definitely praying for adaptability in my life. I find myself having to pray and remind myself throughout my days and weeks often to adjust my expectations, change my thinking, adjust my angle, in short, to adapt. Oddly, it actually makes me think about my new learnings with budgeting, which I hope is helpful to share this second Sunday of our stewardship campaign. For about two years now, my household has been closely budgeting our money, trying to reduce our debts and gain a sense and understanding of where our money is going and what it's doing. It was an intimidating process to start at first, but my wife and I took a Dave Ramsey total money makeover class here at the church and then found our way to a program online called You Need a Budget that we use monthly. There are lots of tools to help out there for budgeting, and uh, you may find something that works for yourself, but in this particular program, You Need a Budget, or short, YNAB, as some people know it, has a set of rules. The rule that's helped me the most and fits this time the best is what they call rolling with the punches. Rolling with the punches is an expression you've likely heard before, it means if you're in a fight, you have to adjust your position uh, according to the punches coming your way. Likewise, in life too, you have to bend and flex and adapt to the situation. In budgeting, it means that even the most experienced long-time budgeters have to adjust their budget all the time. Life doesn't just follow your plan. In budgeting, you make a solid, informed plan monthly and know it will never be perfect. 
It will always involve moving around your money in categories, adjusting to the ever-changing flow in and out of your dollars you spend. For example, during sheltering in place, we've been eating at home much more, and so our grocery bill has gone way up, not to mention the cost of groceries have gone up, which I'm sure you've noticed. So we adjusted our budget, allowing for more spending on groceries while we've been able to reduce our gas and transportation line item since we're driving less. Roll with the punches. Or our spending on summer camps for the kids went way down this summer, but we bought more things to play with in the backyard, so we moved money from one category to another in order to compensate in our budget. Roll with the punches. Stewardship, like life, requires rolling with the punches, adapting to the situation, and caring for what we have, even in challenging circumstances. As I studied the scriptures for this second Stewardship Sunday, it also seemed that there was a theme of rolling with the punches that fit well with each reading. In Psalm 23, a famous psalm that you likely know, even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death and dine at the table with our enemies, God provides a path for us and blesses us with oil and overflows our cups. Paul, in the letter to the Philippians, reminds us that even when he was in prison, he called us to rejoice always. While in jail, Paul rolls with the punches and writes, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. In Matthew's gospel for today, in parable, we are invited by Christ to the wedding feast. But will we roll with the punches and accept what is offered? Can we roll with the punches as we try to find meaning in this very challenging parable? COVID-19 and this time is not what we expected. Our budgets may not be as we expected either. Yet God provides in the midst of these circumstances and calls us to a Christian life of responding with gratitude, generosity, and grace with what we have to offer. So I hope, like me, you're looking at your money and learning as I have to roll with the punches. I've also learned that as I look closer at my money, it speaks about my family's values. The fact that we have a line item in our budget, which is a tithe to St. John's, that comes out of our budget at the beginning of every month, not at the end of the month if there's still money left, speaks about what we value. And the fact that we've added a line item for monthly donations that we discuss as a family speaks about what we value too. We'll be talking about what we can afford this year to give, and I hope you will as well. If every one of you gets in where you can, investing in the mission of our church, which is to live God's love in the world, then we'll continue to show our community what we value. And it won't be perfect, just like our budgets won't be perfect. But it will be valuable to discern God's will together at this time. It will be stewardship discernment. And our goal is to receive 300 pledges so we can continue to meet our programming goals. It's one of the ways we can respond to Christ's grace in our lives by showing our gratitude through our generosity and living our lives with grace. Which brings me back to this very challenging parable about the kingdom of heaven. In the story, Jesus um, tells us about a king throwing a wedding for his son. All the guests won't come at first, even mistreating and killing the slaves sent to remind them. So the king destroys their cities in return. Then those from the main streets are invited per the king's command, the good and the bad, and the wedding hall is filled. But one guest is not wearing the proper wedding robe. The king asks this man directly, and the man remains speechless in response. The king has him bound and thrown out of the party and into the outer darkness, where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. It ends with the line, for many are called, but few are chosen. 
A typical interpretation of this parable will tell us good news like, all are invited to God's feast, whether good or bad, and all may come. But God also sees our hearts like those refusing to come or the one who comes in the wrong clothes unprepared. Like them, God knows if we are authentically trying to follow Christ or just pretending. The trouble with this typical interpretation or interpretations like it is that they all start with the allegory that God is the king of the parable. And if that's so, we have to reconcile the actions of God as brutal and violent to both the initial guests who don't come and the guest who comes in the wrong clothes. But a colleague of mine wondered about a different interpretation. What if Jesus is the rejected guest at the end of this parable? After all, Jesus will be rejected by the empire and king and sent to the cross. When he is confronted by Pilate, he too is speechless to questions like this guest. He is sent to die in the darkness on that hill of skulls where there was weeping and gnashing of teeth at his death. For me this week, I need this different angle on the parable. I need a God who gets what it's like for me to feel like I am cast out of the party, into the scary darkness, lost and confused. I want a Jesus who is there for all of us who are outside of the party, wondering if they will be loved again. I need a Jesus who will be there consoling all the rejected because he knew ultimate rejection. And I need a Jesus waiting to take the rejected back with him to the wedding banquet, knocking back on the door of the king, demanding God's justice. This interpretation today gives me space to roll with the punches of this difficult parable and with what life is throwing at me right now. You know, pledging to a church may seem crazy to those who aren't part of a life of faith, and it may be a strain for you this year to even think about it. But roll with the punches. Look at your budget like I will and get in where you can. Because I think God is calling us to respond to this time with adaptability, flexibility, and the ability to roll with it. Because people of faith do just that. We live lives of faithfulness in uncertain times. Jesus' love and grace to be with us at our toughest moments never stops surprising us. And so, we surprise the world by responding to challenges, by trusting in God, and living our lives with gratitude, generosity, and grace in all circumstances. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus forever. Amen. United as one body in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy God, fill your church with a spirit of joyous hospitality. We pray for bishops, church leaders, and teachers, and all of your children, as they invite others to your table of boundless grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, just as you lovingly made your beautiful creation, help us to so protect it. Allow healing rains to fall, restoring valleys, mountains, and pastures, and still and running waters. Be with all your creatures, from small chirping crickets to great majestic blue whales. Help us in becoming good stewards of your creation. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Holy God, mediate disagreements and bless the efforts of diplomats, international peace workers, and world leaders who navigate conflict. Open eyes to paths of productive conversation in which respect and understanding lead to justice and peace for all. Be with relief ministries providing needed clothing and other personal care assistance. In this time of political unrest and division, guide us to unity and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, strengthen doctors, medical care workers, and caretakers. Let your gentle healing be known among those who are weary or ill, especially Kevin, Dan, Jean, Lawrence, Tiffany, Kara, Lena, Sylvia, Carolyn, Alicia Sr., Tom, Thaddeus, Chuck, Dimitri, all our Stephen ministers and those in their care and those we name silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, comfort those who grieve the loss of loved ones, both newly departed and those who have long laid heavy on our hearts. Today, our prayers and condolences go to Bill Saylor and family at the death of his uncle, Gilbert Bowdoin, to the family and friends of Chuck Dowell, and to the Huber and Pleasant families at the death of Rachel and Anna's uncle, Morris Pleasant. We also pray for all who have lost loved ones to COVID-19. Hold all these people in your soothing embrace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, guide us in becoming an open and accepting church. Help us to walk beside those in pain and in need. Empower us with compassion and understanding so we may meet them where they are and provide listening ears, loving hearts, and beneficial actions. Lead us to live in ways of love for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these prayers we lift up to you, O Lord, spoken and unspoken, trusting in your everlasting mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you and your household. At this time, we will receive our tithes and our offerings. Please follow the directions on the screen to accomplish that. And just a note, next Sunday, October 18th, is Commitment Sunday. And so we are receiving on that Sunday in the forms of online or mailed back pledges for the general fund for the coming year in 2021. And if you're new to St. John's, you can ignore what I just said because the greatest gift you can offer us is to go to our website and click on our New to St. John's page and provide us with your contact information so we can be in touch with you about this wonderful place of faith that we call home. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, 
to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless and keep you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord, and live God's love in the world. Amen.